Hi, this is Stephanie. I'm just going to talk a little bit about the um, five of my images that were from Saturday's wedding, 7 7 uh, The first picture is the bride's engagement ring, and I incorporated her shoes into the picture using them to hold the ring. Um, her colors were this fuchsia color with um, uh, white, so I wanted to use her shoes because I like the texture, the sequins, the texture, and the bold color. Um, and I used a uh, shallow depth of field so I'd see the rock on the diamond on her ring um, sharp against the blurred background, which by the way is her bouquet. And it didn't matter that it was the flowers, I just wanted the color there, so I threw the bouquet there in between her shoes, knowing it wouldn't look like flowers because it was going to be blurred out. Um, this one, the ISO was 800. I did use the flash. Um, uh, F3.5, and I used my 16 to 35 lens at 35 millimeters. Shutter speed was 1 100th of a second. Um, the next picture was the bride and her dad coming down the aisle. I did not use a flash for this. Um, this was a gothic cathedral church. Um, they were very far away. My flash on my camera wouldn't be able to reach them. Um, so I did everything I could to let the natural, what little existing natural light there was into the image. Um, I didn't write them down in order here. Okay, so my ISO was 1600 and I used a shutter speed of 1 50th. Um, I always brace my camera against my body so I don't have camera shake. Um, I used my 2470 at 28 millimeters and the um, aperture was 3.5. And the thing I like about not using a flash is the you can see the reflections in the tile floor. You can also see the natural light that there was some windows on the side that was coming in uh, illuminating the bride with her dad but you can also see that light on the edge of the pews and another thing I like about this picture I did a um, vertical composition because I wanted to see the big uh, I forget what it's called rosette uh, window I should know this from art history um, and the arches and the ceiling and I like that it's being closed in by all those guests leaning into the aisle with their phones or just taking a peek like this little kid here trying to see around all the people reaching up with their cameras. Um, okay, so that's, that's all I have to say about that one. And, oh, and with the uh, high ISO and the slow shutter speed, it also made the lights that were in the church look like they were glowing even brighter than they were. So I was overexposing it um, a bit. Okay, next. Bride and groom at the reception. This picture, she had these stickers on and she was going to put them on before the ceremony and she asked me, should we put them right side up or upside down? Cause you could take the picture while we're kneeling or whatever. And, um, but I wasn't sure if I'd get the picture during the ceremony with them kneeling. And I also knew the stickers would get scuffed up if they walked with them. So I said, well, why don't you leave them in your purse, bring them to the reception so they don't get scuffed up. And I'll, I know the venue and there's a couch with a table and I'll have you kick your feet up on the table. She said, that sounds perfect. So we didn't put these stickers on. I put the stickers on right before we took the picture during the reception after dinner. Um, I wanted the the stickers to be the focus, so I used the, uh, let me see, my aperture was 2.8, um, I used my 24-70 lens at 30 millimeters, and the shutter speed was 1 60th of a second, and the ISO was 1000, and I did use my bounce flash for this. Um, and while I was setting the picture up, um, the, the couch had that nice curve, so I wanted that 
as part of my composition so it wasn't just the, the flat part of the couch so I sat them there and I also had them lean toward each other and I wanted them holding hands and at first their hands were hiding behind the groom's me shoe so I had them move so their hands were in between his shoes because I wanted their hands to show um, might not seem like a big deal but it was a detail that I I wanted in the picture um, next this was their rings on a card box the bride did a lot of uh, planning and making a lot of the details herself and she made this beautiful card box with her fuchsia and lime green um, and white colors for her wedding colors so I wanted to incorporate this I thought this would be a, a perfect um, I also took just this for a background page in their album without the rings but I thought it would be a good stage for the rings um, this one was ISO 1000, f-stop 5.0, 160th of a second, and I used my 2470 lens zoomed into 70. And that's um, why even at 5.0, I have the nice um, background uh, blurred out. Um, okay, so next and last. This picture on, the, on one of the last recasts, I asked, I'm sorry, what's his name? Adam, Adam Lerner about lighting because I wanted to start using um, some some slave flashes, some off-camera lighting. Um, so I, on my Flickr page, I have about 70 pictures from this wedding, and most of the uh, slave light pictures I took, I had the uh, my assistant would hold the slave light directly behind the couple, and I'd shoot it so they'd have this. Um, halo backlit around them um, so you'll see that in some of the other pictures if you want to look at my my Flickr page but uh, this specific picture they were doing a Hungarian dance lots of energy and excitement and I set the what I got was the, it's I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly a MIDI M-I-D-I slave flash D-I it was like 60 bucks and the tripod was I don't know 15 bucks it's just a really cheap tripod it doesn't have to be um, you know the the flash is only ounces so it doesn't have to be a heavy-duty tripod and I like this because I could also set it up like this and not have it very tall um, not something I'd want set up on the dance floor though because it would easily be knocked over so anyway back to talking about this picture I instead of hiding the light I wanted that blast of light to to come out in the picture because I, I I put it on the DJ stage there and I set it in between people um, but these are the bride's parents back there so I set it right there and they were in this huge circle and this dad came out to kick and dance with his daughter and they were spinning so I had to wait till they were facing me the right way and my my body needed to be in a spot where I could see my flash without this gentleman blocking it because I wanted that um, burst of light coming through. Uh, so this one this is the last one. Okay, this was ISO 320. I had to use a lower ISO. Usually during this uh, reception, it's so dark, and um, I used 1600, 2000, 2400 ISO. This one, because I was using the two light sources, I had to put my ISO at 320. My f-stop was, otherwise it would be, everything was blown out. Um, my f-stop was 4.5, used my 24-70 lens at 24 millimeters. Uh, one, the shutter speed was 1 160th of a second. Again, a very fast shutter speed for receptions. I'm usually shooting at 160th or 180th. So um, it took some experimenting using the second light source. This was my first wedding that I tried it, uh, and I waited for the reception because I didn't want any, um, because it's new to me, and I wasn't about to take any chances missing any shots because of it. So uh, the reception was a good, gave me a good opportunity 
opportunity to experiment with this light. So that's all. I hope this um, helped any of you that are thinking about wedding photography or anything else I said that might have helped you. Feel free to leave a comment for me and I'll answer any questions you have. And that's all. Thanks for watching.